Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins speak as the Blue Jays front office looks ahead to 2025. Hey everyone, welcome into Long Ball. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Blue Jays writer Rob Longley. And Rob, you were at it. The Blue Jays holding their end of season availabilities with team president Mark Shapiro and GM Ross Atkins. And Shapiro making it clear right off the bat that Ross Atkins will be returning in 2025. Something you of course have written about recently. Are you surprised at all though for a team that did not make the playoffs and had high expectations as not making any significant changes in the front office. Not particularly, Rob. I'm not, not surprised at a number of levels. Uh, first of all, um, Mark Shapiro, Shapiro and Ross Atkins are basically attached to the hip. They have been since they were with Cleveland and and, and are, have been linked together since they've been in Toronto. Um, also, over the last month of the season, even with the struggles, it became apparent that uh, that Ross Atkins was already beginning his planning for, for, for next season and was involved in some minor decisions in terms of personnel so it was clear that he was still running the show and then when it was announced on uh, Monday that the season ending press conference would be here today on Wednesday with general manager Ross Atkins as one of the principals it was clear that the decision had already been made and I think you know you know uh, from Shapiro's perspective it would be admitting defeat if he if he parted ways with with Ross Atkins uh, at this point Although, you know, once the uh, once today's press conference has sort of evolved a little bit, I found it sort of fascinating because, um, well, they were both contrite. Both both men were contrite. It was uh, uh, Shapiro was was interesting in, in defending Atkins, saying that, listen, we've been to the playoffs for three of the past five years. We've played meaning, meaningful September baseball for the last four of the last five years, this, this year being the only exception. And to me, that's good enough. So. I'm sure that most Blue Jays fans would take exception to that, and also to the fact that um, you know three of those playoff, all three of those playoff experiences rather uh, were terrible. You know they didn't win a game in any of them. So as I wrote in my column, which should be up on the TorontoSun.com any minute now, it's like um, same old, same old. It's like uh, aim low, boys, and that seems to be what it is. Um, Having said that, you know, they, they believe in their own metrics and their own analytics that suggest that the team was better than it performed this year. And they believe that the core that is still around is, is, is one that they can build on. Now, maybe they're just posturing. And I guess that's what you do when you when you remain in the same positions. But that seems to be the company line heading into the offseason. Now, overall, I think the comments that they made were uh, as expected, talking about the pitching in the bullpen. That was uh, an area of weakness this year and wanting to improve the offense and and roster construction. I did find it interesting, the uh, conversation around Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I know team president Mark Shapiro not willing to go necessarily and say that he's a a generational player at this point. But were there any, you know, interesting comments made by other men that really stood out to you uh, in today's uh, news conference? Probably the one that you referenced, Rob, that he 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 didn't got, want to go down that road of referring to him as a generational player. Well, now whether that's a, a a negotiation tactic or not, I don't know. But there didn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, exuberance about about Vlad Guerrero Jr. I mean, here's a guy who's a, a cornerstone player of, of this franchise and has been for four or five years, and 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 in the minds of many, he he's the guy that you have to build around going forward as well if you're going to have to if you're going to have any opportunity to avoid a complete rebuild. And that's what I think that, that they seem to be saying. Now, if you read between the lines and they're being sincere that they don't think that Vlad Guerrero Jr. is worth $400 million or whatever it's going to cost to get him, are they telling us then that they're going to go all in for one year? In other words, they'll try to add to, to Vlad Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette for 2024, sorry, 2025, And then after that, all bets will be off. So does that mean that this offseason means you go and try to land a bunch of guys in one-year contracts because you believe you either don't want to extend either or or both of those guys or you don't think it's feasible to extend either or both of those guys? I found it very fascinating, and I think um, that it's going to be certainly a huge storyline this season, what they do with Vlad. But, you know, to their credit, I suppose, that has been very much the company line every time that Mark Shapiro or, or Ross Atkins is asked about the contract status and the future of Vlad Guerrero Jr. So whether they're just being playing coy or whether they don't believe he's the guy uh, will play out over the next 12 months. Yeah, and GM Ross Atkins was definitive and talking about not taking a step back this year, uh, next year, I should say, this team is uh, going to try to compete and uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Bo Bichette going to be uh, big parts of that, you would think. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below for Rob Longley. I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time.